Welcome to Winning Secret TV. Take it to God in prayer. Prayer has the answer, to virtually every man's yawning and needs. It is superior to human weapons of war. Physical weapons, can only be used, against physical beings or physical objects. But prayer, is effective, both for physical and non-physical battles. Prayer is the act of bringing divinity, into human affairs. It is the channel of communication, between God and man. If you are effective and efficient in prayers, following God's ordained principles and procedures for effective prayers, you won't lose any battle in life. Many times we suffer hunger, diseases, pains, deprivations, and other things, we are not supposed to suffer, because, we are either too lazy to pray, or because we do not understand, the efficacy of prayers, in solving challenges. Many times we even carry burdens, that God had asked us to leave for Him. Or even the ones, that God would have taken away and solved for us. Because, we lack the will to pray. So you, our dearest listeners. What are your worries? What is burdening you? Why are you restive? What is taking sleep from your eyes? Why are you still carrying, what the Lord has asked you to drop, at the cross for Him to deal with? Why are you alone, what the Lord has offered to assist you in? Have you not heard or known, that God has offered to help you? You are only required, to come to Him with that concern. For He cares for you. Child of God, the battle is not yours. Why it is weighing you down is because, you have made it your own. As a believer in Christ, God has promised, never to leave you nor abandon you. He says, when you pass through the waters. He will be with you, to make sure it doesn't overflow you. He says, He will uphold you, with His right hand of righteousness. All He required of you, is to come to Him. The Lord cares for you. He also knows about all your challenges. All that He wants, and have asked of you, is to request His help. Our anchor scripture today, shall therefore be Matthew chapter 6 from verses 25 to 34. It reads, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one, a cubit to his, be stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not, see arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Dot now what is God telling His people in the passage? He is simply telling believers. That. There is absolutely no need for worries and anxiousness. Provided, they bring their concerns and hand them over to Him. Jesus has in this passage summarized, what should be a believer's disposition and outlook on life. Or whenever he is confronted, with a challenge or challenging situation in this life. That, they should always, know that God, is at the standby waiting, watching, and on the lookout for you. To ask or request for His help or assistance, which he willingly and readily waited to offer. He says, in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3, Call upon me and I will answer you. What amazing assurance! So why die in silence? The problem is not about the gigantic nature of the problem. Is not even, about the location of the problem. Is not even, about the stage or the complexity of the problem. Those and many other similar complaints, aren't the real matter. The real matter is that you hadn't asked for God's help. 
And if you had asked and nothing has changed then keep asking, intensify your asking intensity, frequency and vibrancy. Until he answers you. Because, he will surely answer you. For he is the one that says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 to 8. Ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. Everyone who asks will receive. The one who searches will find, and for the one who knocks, the door will be opened. God cannot deny his word. In fact, the Bible made us understand, in Psalms 138 verse 2, that God magnifies his word even above his name. God is ever faithful, he says come to me all you that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Why not come to him, with that burden and have rest? Being anxious and being full of worries, won't solve anything. Only faith through obedience and handing the situation over to God, can solve everything. There is no amount of challenge, or burden, too hard or so burdensome, that God cannot handle. Are you afraid of approaching or coming to God with it? Maybe because it felt too unbearable, too bad, too late, beyond salvage, so bizarre, etc. Worry not, God's insurance covers it all. And he says, he won't even rebuke or reject you. He says, in John chapter 6 verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and in that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. God will not reject you. He will not rebuke you, and he won't turn you down. He is a merciful and ever-loving God. He is your Father, and is also your lover. And above all, he is the one that has asked you to come. A person duly invited, cannot be disdained or turned down, when he has come. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, God says, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This shows that, there is no type of case, he won't be able, to handle satisfactorily, to whoever that comes. And in verse 19 it says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Meaning that, if you willingly obey and come, you are sure to return blessed. Now the question is, how do you come or how do you take it to God? Because, there is always a how to everything. 1. You come or take things to God, of course through prayer. For prayer is the acceptable channel, of communication between God and man. 2. And for faster results, you may add fasting to your prayer. Prayer and fasting, see Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 to the end. Taking it to God also includes Allowing God to fight for you, against those that are against you, for no justifiable cause or reason. And God has always indicated interest, and willingness to do so. In Exodus chapter 14 14, he said, that, he would fight for you, and you will hold your peace. And in Isaiah chapter 49 25 to 26, he said he would contend with those who contend with you. Save your children and feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and shall get them drunken in their own blood. God has asked us to leave vengeance for him. That vengeance is his. Therefore in the event that we feel cheated, mistreated, accused, and or slandered. The Bible urges us, instead of resorting to unconventional means to seek revenge. God says, leave vengeance for me. In Romans chapter 12 verse 19, the Bible says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And in Isaiah 63 4 it says, For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So no need for revenge. Take your grievances, or feeling of being shortchanged, or cheated to God for he knows when and how to give you the best vengeance, and to give you justice. Because of the strength of the flesh, it may fail. So all you need do is, go to God with your case in prayers. He knows the best way and approach to give you justice, or avenge for you if necessary. Let us pray. Everlasting Father. We thank you once again. 
for the rare privilege of sharing from your word. Forgive us, for all the times we have tried to do it alone without you. And our wisdom has failed us. Now, dear Lord, we are returning to you. Please Lord, do not consider our past mistakes and opinionated proclivity. We promise to henceforth, work in dependence and acknowledgement of your powers and wisdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We want to give you another interesting video to watch next. Also, our team would appreciate it if you could like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends on social media. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Winning Secret TV, to not miss out on other exciting videos that we post practically every week. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. Also, you may leave your comment or prayer requests in the comment box and we shall respond to you accordingly. God bless you.